You're listening to Brand to Brand, the marketing show. With your hosts, Thomas Sterling. This is the future. This is where everything goes. And Veronica St. Cyr. Why the hell would anybody buy this? An unfiltered conversation on brand strategy. And it worked like crazy. Marketing trends. I think they're in again. And emerging technology. There's going to be big impacts here. You're excited. I'm pumped. (laughs) All right. Let's kick things off. Welcome back, everyone. Today, we're talking about AI. Artificial intelligence is transforming the way businesses operate and is poised to change a significant amount of what we do day in and day out, reducing mundane tasks and really shifting mindsets around what work needs to be done by a human. What are your thoughts on this, V? Yeah, it seems like it's all anybody can talk about, and for good reason. It's exploding really, really fast. Uh, For many people, there's a moral challenge, right? There's a fear of a dystopian future or like a future like Wally, where people are just like boneless sacks of meat that float around. It's not dystopian. (laughs) You don't need to do anything. You just work for the computer. I mean, it has to start somewhere, Thomas. What if the computer makes you you know, move to somewhere nice. It might be great. It might be great working for a computer. I think the keyword there was makes you (laughs) that I don't like. (laughs) But to touch on that, there is a possibility of unlocking human potential like never before by mitigating some of the things that humans have been doing that haven't required critical thinking. Haven't we heard all this before? Haven't, isn't this a story that's been told this over tale is old and as over? Time. You were talking about people being afraid of when books came out. Yeah. Remember when books came out? <laughs> oh, yeah, I remember. Books. I yeah, you were right there. People were afraid you wouldn't think anymore. Someone was still chiseling a stone <laughs> tablet and someone walked by with a book and they were like, what the hell is that? We're all going to be idiots. Everyone's just going to walk <laughs> around with the book. They'll have all the answers. They won't think at all. It's a calculator. It's a tool. Can I be used like for that. good or be used for evil. And with that, let's get into it. It's a little bit of shake and then fake. Shake and fake. That's what you say. Yeah, you say it. All right, chat GPT or mid journey, what's it going to be? Before I tell you, I thought we could kick this off with a clip to set the stage. Mm, All right. It's a Last Week Tonight episode with John Oliver on AI. And in this video, he's referencing mid journey and chat GPT. Let's play it. But it is worth knowing there is a major threshold that AI hasn't crossed yet. And to understand, it helps to know that there are two basic categories of AI. There is narrow AI, which can perform only one narrowly defined task or small set of related tasks like these programs. And then there is general AI, which means systems that demonstrate intelligent behavior across a range of cognitive tasks. General AI is something that some scientists think is unlikely to occur for a decade or longer, with others questioning whether it will happen at all. So just know that Right now, even if an AI insists to you that it wants to be alive, it is just generating text. It is not self-aware. Yet. (laughs) So coming out of that, I'm picking mid-journey, which leaves you with ChatGPT, which I know you're pumped about because you're a a fanatic. I will take that all day. You're a fanboy. Possibly a ChatGPT groupie. We don't know. I love it. (laughs) I was going to say super fan, but that's okay. That's nicer. And I mean, in fairness, I'm a fan of all these AI offshoots and all these new advancements. Don't worry. They're they're not listening. You don't have to. But it means, (laughs) yes, thank them for listening. They're listening to the transcript right now. It's being piped right in. God. ChatGPT was created by OpenAI and was actually started and co-founded by a group of technology industry leaders and investors, including Elon Musk. You know, we know you love, we know you love him. <laughs> <laughs> I know you love him. <laughs> and he left actually back in 2019 to focus on Tesla, SpaceX. And since then... Uh, has come out recently. We'll talk about that later on his feelings about AI. But I know for a lot of listeners, they've probably just started hearing about it. And some of them maybe haven't even used it yet, which if you haven't, PSA, stop listening to this episode and go test it out. Yeah, it is, it is, it is crazy. crazy. <laughs> what was your first experience with it? So first of all, so for people who don't know, the way that it works is it uses prompts that you input and it spits back information. So you can use this in a variety of different ways. You can use it to write content. You can say, here's an example of a social post. Give me seven variations. Okay, now can you make it funny? Okay, now can you make it sound like this? Can you write this in my brand's voice? Can you write a job description? But I I thought it was interesting. You could also ask it for advice, which 
thinking about how Chat hard GPT therapy. Yeah. Thinking about like people who are writing into magazine columns or radio shows who are calling in for advice. You can use Chat GPT like a free therapist and therapy is expensive and hard to get. So that's my PSA. If you're having a hard time, ask Chat GPT for some help. So my first inclination was I'll ask it for advice. I was not aware of the level of outputs it can provide that mm. are so insanely useful and how it will learn from every experience. So, so, so much more. And I think for a lot of people, this is a disruptive moment in tech for so, so, so long. It has been search to find the answer. And now it's mm -hmm. asked to find the answer. People joke about ask Jeeves <laughs> or I'm feeling lucky, the I'm feeling lucky button. And you just get some shitty website <laughs> that's supposed to give you the answer. This is a predictive text experience where it's basically giving you the answer one word at the time and predictively figuring out what the next word should be. So it's not like you're actually having a real conversation yeah. with someone. But it's fast. It is incredibly fast. You're not like, hey, you're not assigning it a task and coming back in a week and hoping it got <laughs> to it. You're watching it just immediately answer your question. It's pretty crazy. It is. So why mid-journey? Well, mid-journey hasn't come in handy as much in my everyday life, but it is instead of the language-based uh, model like ChatGPT, it's focused on image and art generation. It has definitely made a name for itself in the art world for a few reasons, one of which being artists who are mad about it, because if you are an artist who is a professional and that's how you make your money, you know, when Lenza came out and everyone was like putting photos of their face in there, you had artists who were like, well, how am I going to get someone to to sit for a portrait now or <laughs> sit for a portrait? What is this, 1800s? Or it takes a long time <laughs> for the film to develop. Oh, God. Or like custom, you know, create you anything if someone can create it themselves and think they're an artist. On the flip side, you have folks like my tattoo artist who just did this for me, by Whoa. the way. I branded myself as someone who brands myself. <laughs> <laughs> it's meta. Um, who uses mid journey for concepting and said, it's amazing. If you're, if you have any kind of creative block, you can go in there. You're not going to pass it off as a final output, but it create, it can un kind of stick that block that can cost so many hours of potential productivity mm. time. Yeah. I think so much of work comes down to understanding what desired final output you want to get to. And if you can use AI tools to help scaffold your way to there, looking at what a sample output might be, and if you're in a business setting and maybe it's making up a fake use case of a, a competitor and what, what they might do in a certain situation. I think a lot of people that are just scratching the surface with using ChatGPT, it's all about prompt engineering. Mm. And beyond just simply your prompt, you can give it content. You can give it references. You can give it sources. You can get you can set a block of text up to it and then help it use that to provide its answer back. But isn't and that I, life? Like you only get what you give? Well, you only get what you put into it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you and I were talking earlier, you appreciated this analogy I had where it's kind of like, you know, you, the quality of the answer is is what you provide it. Mm -hmm. So it's sort of like when you're looking for a friend to give you relationship advice and you're only sharing the negatives and they provide you, well, you should break up with that person. They're like, well, no, hold on. I didn't tell you about all the great stuff. And they're like, oh, okay, well, geez, now I don't know what to provide <laughs> you, right? It's like, or same with like a job. You're having a tough situation with a coworker or otherwise. It's too easy to only provide a subset of the information. And so that's a big part of this, right? This is a learning model that was trained on data. And in this case for ChatGPT up through 2021. Doesn't know about current events. It does not. You can't ask it about the Queen of England. <laughs> yeah. I actually asked ChatGPT in preparing for this episode. I do a lot of the work myself, but once in a while I get a little stuck. I need some research. If you didn't use AI to prepare for this episode, I know that would have been kind of lost the right? plot on exactly. the whole conversation. Thank you. Today. I thought it was only right. <laughs> I asked ChatGPT who created Midjourney, and it said OpenAI, and I knew that was not true because I had done my own research. And I said, "Are you sure that's correct?" And ChatGPT said. Actually, no, I apologize for the confusion. My bad. I can only access data from 2021 and beyond. Could you give me some more information? And I'm like, no, I'm not. I don't work for you. I mean, no matter what, when you use these tools, it makes it even more important for the quality assurance, for the review, for the sourcing, and for the vetting. And I think ChatGPT is getting better and better. 
GPT-4 just came out a little while ago. Some people have access to it. I would say anybody listening should check that out. And there's a lot of different ways you can do it. They have a subscription model for it. GPT, chat GPT 3.5, which is what everybody mainly is using or some iteration of three is not as sophisticated. So you may use it and ask it to generate you a response. And it seems kind of redundant what the answer is. It's just not as sophisticated. It doesn't have the same computing power. Ultimately, it's definitely worth getting a sense for what it can do. And this latest iteration has access to the internet so it can search the open web and they're launching a whole plugin store. So you're gonna be able to have it talk to all sorts of other things. There's been cases, use cases, where people have used it to help them look at potentially like booking travel, uh, booking a restaurant through open table, all sorts of ways to extend it where AI is actually coming out of the computer screen into the physical world, which may be even scarier. Speaking of scarier for some, um, Mid Journey 5 just launched in March of 2023 and absolutely blew people away with the hyper realistic photos. There was just one that we saw today that was celebrities at the annual concrete eating contest. And oh, these God. look so real but if you're a marketer have you ever found yourself not being able to find a great stock photo you don't have to worry about somebody else getting the same photo as you you have access to target exactly what you need you can prompt it to a point where you're getting the exact output that you desired for a specific marketing function the flip side of that the like not funny side um, and the very serious implication of this is the actual fake news mayhem which we saw when AI generated photos circulated of Donald Trump being arrested, scenes of him walking with police, scenes of him fighting with police that looked so realistic and were very fake. It is, it's going to be so much easier to doctor photos that we are going to have or to deep, figure out. Deep fake videos, deep fakes. which it's, we've been talking about for a little while now. Yeah, it's, it poses a, a, a threat, but again, it's like a hammer. You can build a house or, or kill somebody. So it's up to us to decide how we want to use this. And what's so fascinating about all these advances is it's not a linear progression. These are compounding changes, and so things are growing exponentially, even calling into question some of our sci-fi predictions for what AI would be like. Let me play the clip. I have even had dreams. Human beings have dreams. You are just a machine, an imitation of life. Can a robot write a symphony? Can a robot turn a canvas into a beautiful masterpiece? Can you? Coming off that video, mid-journey, you can make masterpieces, so robots could create masterpieces, although art is subjective as always, and do we consider that art? We're not sure. Uh, Muse.net. Uh, created by OpenAI, like ChatGPT, allows you to create AI-generated music, i.e. maybe compose a symphony. Uh, in one example, have you heard any of this, any of the AI-generated music? I've been hearing a lot about it, although I can't say I'm a listener. <laughs> okay, so in one example, there's a Tupac Biggie mashup, which obviously yeah, is impossible. Crazy. One most notably was a Rihanna cover of a Beyonce song that we have to play a clip of. Let's do it. There's a comment that's internet really said, if she doesn't give us new music, we'll make our own. <laughs> the funniest one out of all of this is Drake, who actually like lost his mind because... <laughs> There's been so many mashups of Drake doing covers. One was a cover of female rapper Ice Spice's Munch. And Drake responded on Instagram saying, this is the final straw AI. <laughs> to the point where Universal Music Group asked streaming services to block AI companies from accessing its music. Copyright is Yikes. a big thing, Yikes. right? Leads us right into that point. I actually have a clip right here talking about mid journey and leading us into some of the issues around copyright with AI. There are many different companies and projects competing to be the best generative image model in 2023. Stable Diffusion is the leading open source project. Then you have tons of closed source projects like Dolly from OpenAI and countless others trying to monetize this space. But in my opinion, Midjourney is the most impressive place to prune. The images just pop. They're vibrant, realistic, and aesthetically pleasing. For that, we shouldn't be thanking Midjourney, but all the photographers and artists who unwillingly provided the data set to create this black magic that will make their sons and daughters obsolete. Interestingly, the U.S. Copyright Office 
office just recently ruled that generative AI art cannot be copyrighted because you need to show proof of human authorship. If you take some AI art and modify it as a human, then it could become eligible, but it's reviewed on a case-by-case -case basis. That's good news because it means grifters can't just prune something out and license it to you as a copyrighted work. The ones who will make the most bank in this movement are the ones who provide the models like Midjourney and OpenAI. And taking this further, around the time Midjourney 5 and ChatGPT 4 came to market, the U.S. Copyright Office announced an initiative to explore copyright law and policy issues raised by AI. Does the government have the best track record on uh, <laughs> legislating or putting a box around something that's moving this fast? That is a tough thing for them to figure out. Yeah. And a lot of people are talking in the news today. Elon Musk, a little while ago, signed that open letter saying AI is evil. We need to pump the brakes, everybody. And then a month later, he comes out saying, actually, no, I'm launching Truth GPT. That's literally like someone being like, you want to like have a foot race? And you're like, oh, hold on, I got to... <laughs> and, and like take off. <laughs> He's like, what the hell is that? <laughs> it's wild. And most recently, people are, are, the internet's exploding. People talking about AI upgrading itself. So now, one use case was plugging two chatbots together and having the two of them tackle tasks at uh -oh. the same time. So you can provide it one prompt. There's a whole bunch of subsets of things you can do and then multiple tasks, up to five. So it could be something, someone used the use case. They said, I want you to plan a wine retreat where people are flying in from different locations, select what travel, select what locations, what the itinerary is, and lay out all the links for me to book the thing. What the Crazy. <laughs> So if we had to talk about any other brands, what would it be, Veronica? Well, I want to talk about some of the common things that are already using AI because there are probably people listening who are like, I don't want to use that. No. Which you shouldn't be. But spoiler alert, if you're afraid of it, you're already using it. <laughs> it's in your phone, voice assistants like Siri, Alexa, grammar checkers like Grammarly, language learning apps like Duolingo are learning from you using it. It is teaching itself. So it's in stuff. I think that's important to keep in mind because whether you want to take action and start using these tools or you want to wait until it's already been incorporated in the tools that you use in your everyday life, AI is coming for you. Oh, God. <laughs> I think we have to talk about Dolly. Dolly is OpenAI's equivalent of MidJourney. And I think one of the things that's interesting about this, they're all competing for who is going to have the most photorealistic or most compelling versions of what can be generated by a simple text prompt. Adobe's also working on this. They have Firefly and the internet is sort of coming out saying that it isn't as good. But I think a big part of that is because Adobe was like, we're not using anybody else's copyrighted stuff. We're only using our mm. Adobe stock. And so that speaks volumes to what we just heard in that video, right? At the end of the day, the training data, which was the entire human lexicon that was on the internet, belonged to who? And now a certain key number of companies have access to that. They have the models. And now for something completely different. So if you had to put this to work, first and foremost, fire it up. If you have not used this technology yet, you have to. You do not want to be the last person with the AOL email account here. Ultimately, AI is not coming for our jobs yet, but the humans that use AI are going to replace the humans that do not. So it's never been a better time to get started. Second, work with your team, bring people together, subject matter expertise. Have a lot of people look at this technology to say, how can this be helpful in our business? It's not like we're looking at it as a final output for anything that we do, but it can be a really helpful and useful input. And a lot of people look at it as a way to attack writer's block and to get to what they actually need to create. Some are using it to modernize the way that they're looking at data, clean things up, and save on mundane tasks. So there's a lot of efficiencies here. Next, I would say make a commitment with your team and maybe it's with your leadership team. Say, we're gonna use this and we're gonna incorporate it into our day-to-day -day lives because a lot of good will come from that. Explore how you can then take those findings that your team puts together into your everyday workflows. And for those power users out there, there's APIs, there's other ways you can integrate with it. There are going to be millionaires and billionaires that find their fortunes leveraging technology like this. And if you don't take advantage of it, you will miss the moment. Hasta la vista, baby. So if you had to take anything away from the episode, V... 
It's that you only get what you put into AI. And even if this is scary, give it a try. So to quote iRobot, again, ask the right question. And mine would be, it took Americans about 20 years from moving from fearful of cars to having one in their driveway. And it's going to take a heck of a lot less time with AI. So now's the time to get in the driver's seat. And with that, we're out, folks. Thanks for listening. If you liked what you heard, smash the subscribe button or listen wherever you get your podcasts. We're out of here.